Oh shit. <laughs> We're, we're off to a good start. I'll just clip out the first 30 seconds. It's fine. <laughs> we, we didn't make it first five uh, seconds. We didn't. We did make it two seconds. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, welcome to another Cigar Chat. Uh, I'm your host, Rob, from uh, Cigar Federation. Co-host Logan Lawler's is there uh, in the uh, – I'm in the red the red room today. You're kind of in the green room with Buddy Christ hanging out. Um, Logan, how are you feeling today? I'm – very much on edge, Rob. And Buddy Christ may or may not smite you if you're not yeah. careful. Logan's a little bit punchy today, so I'm very we, punchy. We've got the uh, we've got the sensor button ready to go. Um, Five second delay. Yeah, yeah, I wish. Uh, we've got uh, Eric Espinosa joining us. Espinosa Cigars. Eric, thanks for taking the time, buddy. Thanks for having us, guys. Yeah, we we uh, we appreciate you coming on. We've had uh, this is Eric's second time on the show. Um, we had him on once, and we didn't offend him too much, so he decided to come back, um, but we do appreciate you taking the time. Uh, guys, you can uh, check out Cigar Federation on, or check out uh, Cigar Chat on CigarFederation.com uh, and broadcast around the world on Armed Forces Radio Networks. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm getting back into control of what I'm saying now. Um, so let's let's just jump right in. we got a list of questions. We've got some giveaways to get to, you know, the, the, the whole... Uh, the whole spiel, but Eric, give everybody a little bit of background on yourself, Espinosa Cigars, uh, your the La Zona Factory, a little bit of background on just about everything that you do. That I did, that I do, or that I've done? E everything ever since the beginning of time. Well, I've, I've been in the industry about 18 years. I started as a uh, independent, uh, I was an in-house uh, sales guy, uh, then I became an independent uh, sales guy. I've had my own uh, retail shop. Um, and now, you know, I'm manufacturing cigars. I've been doing it for uh, 18 years, been in the business for 18 years, and uh, it, it, it's a great industry, you know. Um, I love the business. Our slogan is, if you love what you do for a living, you'll never work a day in your life, and uh, I'm just having That's a true, great brother. time. I got, uh, I got a great crew here. Um, my son's my business partner. You know, I got Anthony uh, Jimenez, a graphic artist. We got... Uh, Hector, who's in the factory right now, overseeing uh, production, and uh, we're having a great time doing it. We really are. When we're in the process of moving, uh, we've outgrown our building that we have here. Oh wow! So, uh, and and uh, like, uh, got to be out of here by the end of this month. Uh, we're going into uh, like a 7,500 uh, uh, square uh, building there, and uh, you know, you just I just came back from painting some of the walls. <laughs> so, I hope none of the paint shows up there, but yeah, we're having a good time. We're having a, we're enjoying what we're doing. So you uh, you've hit uh, you've hit the industry from all the angles, man. You've you've done the the rep thing, the independent thing, the store thing. Sales and manager, I, I forgot that one. I, I oh, sales there. manager too, and and now yeah. and now manufacturing. Uh, of all that stuff, just a, just a quick question: where, where do what position has taught you the most? I mean, you're obviously every doggy every, style. Every position. Every. Posi every <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you left it wide open. I did. I did. The ding. Every <laughs> I hear Anthony laughing in the background. Which I would say military. So, so okay, so every of all the of all the jobs that you've gone through, uh, the, what you've learned the most is being the. So you were in the military too. No, no, no. I, I, he said doggy style. I said military. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. <laughs> but we are derailed, man. Hey, derailed. That's okay. We're not even like three no, minutes it, in. No, I I would tell you, I would tell you, um, between uh. Between sales, independent sales, and uh, as a manufacturer, because it, it's a completely different uh, uh, business. Because in sales, you get to meet a lot of people uh, that you know that consume the cigars. Uh, I did it in Florida for uh, for about 12 years. I, I not only know all the store owners in Florida, I know most of the consumers in Florida that hang out in the shops. You know, I've been, I did it for so long, and then now with the factory. You know, you I had to learn how to blend. You know, with the characteristic of all the different types of tobacco, what goes well with this, what goes well with that, and you know, and that's a that I don't think you'll ever learn everything. Uh, you know, on that end of it, um, you know, every day I learn more and more. Every time I go to Nicaragua, you know, you, you always learn something something new, and um, you know, I, I don't know everything. Uh, I know a lot. I've been doing it for a while, and but every day, you know, you, you always learn something new. But I would say combination of those two are, are what I learned the most. So yeah, you get kind of a, you get a, a good look of, you know, get an idea of who your customer is, um, 
and the, you know, and the product that you're making. So it's, you definitely have a, a rounded view uh, for sure of the industry. So that's, I mean, that's got to be that puts you at an advantage, I would think. Uh, it, it it does because you know what people want to smoke uh, over here. You know, we're known to make uh, full body cigars, um, but not everybody smokes full body cigars. Mm -hmm. Even though most people that smoke medium to full body, without disrespecting anyone, are the most educated guys. Um, guys that smoke the, tend to smoke the milder cigars. You know, they can uh, pick up whatever, and you know, and and it's good. And it, and you know, and they're happy with that. You know, people that smoke medium to full body are, are most of the bloggers. Most of the people that that you know are really they really have educated themselves on, on, on cigars. So you're dealing with the uh, <clears throat> with the upper echelon. The one percent, dude. Of cigar like, smokers. There you go. <laughs> like uh, Robbie and Logan. Yeah, well, exactly. he, well, maybe Logan, not so much me. I don't know. Rob's Logan. a jank. Yeah, Logan just knows he's so much smarter than I am. Uh, compliment bank. We yeah. need to write that down. Forget that I mean, voice recording. He's he's not very good looking, but he knows his stuff. Hey man, um, I get the ladies. <laughs> I'm smoking like, the. But uh, he likes dogs. Uh, yeah, apparently, I, lo I love dog, especially he, Labradoodles and Chihuahuas. Yeah, he's amazing, uh, dude. We we won't get into that. We're not going to get into that. But we'll move on. <laughs> Logan's a dog lover. Um, so I'm smoking the uh, the Espinosa Maduro. Um, and I think Logan, you smoking the Habano? Or what are you smoking? I was, but I'm smoking the Espinosa Maduro, the limited release Corona. Hmm. I smoked that earlier today. This you is my did. second. This is my second. You smoke two cigars today. today. I can't believe it. That's 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 rare. Hence <laughs> <laughs> why he's coughing, everyone. No, you know what? I had a. I had. I I I lost my nerve right there. Anyways, let's go. Yeah, I had a. I it, it, it almost got. It almost went there. But okay, so we've got. Uh, like I said, we've got Eric here. We've got some. We're gonna go over more of his. You know, in depth with. Uh, you know, the different blends because you guys got a handful of blends. The. Uh, the Warhead has been winning a lot of awards and stuff. We're going to talk about that. I know you got some new stuff on the horizon. Um, actually, let's just do that now. Let's go. Let's go over the blends. You got the the Espinosa, uh, Maduro, and Habano, and those have been around for you know about a couple of years now. Yeah, yeah I would say a, a year and a half. The uh, the Habano has been around a year and a half. The uh, Maduro, it's about uh, nine ten months. Mm -hmm. And those have been getting great reviews. Been reviewed well, you know, lots of lots of hype with that. So um, from there, and then the the 601 line is your other line where you've got the 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 red, the blue, the green, the white. and and the white, right? Thank and you. the La Bamba, and the La Bamba. Don't forget and, La Bamba, yeah. and La Bamba, and then the Warhead. So and the Warhead is probably is your newest release. That was your release at IPCPR. It was limited. Tell us a little bit about that because that one's been getting a lot of a lot of press. Yeah, it did get a lot of press. There was a couple guys went out there, you know, some of your competition that we won't name, they, they awarded us the, the the cigar at the show. We had a lot of buzz. I mean, Anthony, that's, that's Anthony's baby, you know. Um, again, he's the graphic artist here. It was his idea to come up with uh, that design. And, uh, you know, I, I did the blend on it. Um, I tried it out there in Nicaragua, and I thought it was exceptional. And um, But it's got a type of tobacco out there that we can't get uh, – that we can't get, so we limited to uh, 2,000 boxes, boxes of 10. Um, Cigar Snob uh, rated it under top 25, number 10, uh, you know, of the year in, in their magazine. I don't know if that's okay to mention them. Yeah, you can um, mention anybody you want. Yeah, yeah, they they um, gave us a top 10, and um, we just got another uh, 90 rating, Espinosa Habano and uh, Cigar Aficionado. Um, and there's also a cigar that we make uh, for friends of ours, La Jugada. I got the number yep. one uh, in the in the dojo. And so the um, doge, the so doge. We're, we're, so we're doing good. I mean, you know, and uh, I've i put the experience that I've had, you know, into making cigars, knowing what people like, uh, knowing the blends, you know, what does well, uh, you know, and and the sizes because sizes are important. Uh, and I'm a big uh, firm believer that depending on what size you smoke, it it, it all tastes different. You can have the same uh, blend. And the same type of tobacco on a robusto and to make it a toro and it tastes completely different, you know. Sure. Um, so we got to play along with that to try to make it uh, taste the same. But I'm real happy. I'm real happy. Everything's going well. Like I told you guys earlier, we are growing uh, 
the uh, warehouse we have here, and uh, and and things are going good. We got the uh, the factory down packed now. We have a guy out there that uh, goes out there all the time that takes care of that. We got like 80 years of experience out there with between Macho and Carlos, who uh, wow, uh, you know, Cuban guys that uh, he, he ran the H Upman factory out there, and his son is like one of the best rollers there is. And I, we don't get anyone to oversee the cigars other than them. I don't have a, a manager out there because, you know, we, we don't cut corners there. They're the ones that, uh, you know, when the cigar is done, they inspect to make sure. You know, we do have the draw test machines because uh, we intubar our cigars. We triple cap them just like Cuba. And, and we use the machines. We don't really have to use it because of the way we intubar them that, that you know, you probably get a perfect draw all the time. Um so we're we're real happy. We have, you know everything's going uh you know going uh where it's supposed to be. I hey. got a question. Oh, go ahead, Logan. Jump so, in. are you going to happen to be in Nicaragua February 10th to the 16th? Are you going to be there? Yeah, I'm. You, damn, Skippy, son. I, I don't know, but I, I you have an open invitation. I'll I'll tell you where my factory is, and you can go, and I'll have it set up for you that you can hang out there. Done. It's not the biggest factory, Logan, but it is the coziest, nicest factory. You know, uh, Jonathan Drew's a friend of mine. He goes up there, hangs out. Uh, Steve Soccer, when he was with Drew Estate, goes up there, hangs out there. The guy who ran uh, out for this for many years, Jim Colucci, goes and hangs out there. Uh, you know, I have open doors for anyone and everyone that wants to go by. It's a three-story building. It's an old colonial building. It's just flat out gorgeous. It's right next to. Have you been to Nicaragua before, Logan? No, I haven't. It'll be the be the first trip. Okay, probably in the hotel you're gonna stay, uh, which is Los Acos. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's three minutes. You can uh, you can throw a baseball and hit my. Well, maybe not you, but the, the average person. <laughs> <can throw a> <laughs> All right, deal. I'll have to stop by. I'm going to. Then. <laughs> and probably you could probably throw a dog. And <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. a labradoodle, man, because they're yeah. fluffy. They're, they and, catch and air, man. <laughs> With that. Uh, hey, guys, you're listening to uh, Cigar Chat on uh, CigarFederation.com, broadcasts around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this next segment is brought to you by who, Logan? Amadors. It might have a funny name, but it's a really awesome product. Check it out. It's A-M-M-O-D-O-R-S dot com. If you like to kill stuff, you have happened to be in the military, think about taking a 50 cal box and turning it to a humidor. 100% made in the U.S., 100% cool, 1,000% bad A. Check it out. Amadors dot com. Back to you, Robert. <laughs> I think it's ammo doors. Hey, whatever, man. It's cool. You can call whatever you want. It's just bad A. doesn't matter. They're pretty sweet. Uh, they are sweet. You can beat the hell out of those sinks, and and they. Uh, they even have ones from work. World War II, man. Which is yeah, legit. that's. It, it, I think they cost a little bit more, dude. but those things have some. Those have some miles on them for sure. But <laughs> let's, but let's, uh, let's get back. So, um, so we were talking about your factory, and you guys just opened the La Zona factory within the last two years. I think year and a half. Yeah, no, it's been a uh, about a year and a half. I don't know the exact date. Yeah, about a year and a half, close to two years. And now, from from your standpoint, I mean, obviously, it gives you more control over your product. Uh, you, you get more vertically integrated. Um, how how has that really impacted the way that you guys do business? I mean, has it made things easier for you? Is it, has it made things more difficult to put more work on your plate, or how does that how has that worked? Well, a hell of a lot more work and a hell of a lot more money that we've had to. Uh, but yes, it makes a lot of things a lot easier. We control our own destiny because. You know, I need cigars when I need cigars, and uh, when you have someone else manufacturing cigars, you got to wait your turn when you know when they decide to make your your cigars. But you, you know, Robbie, they and Logan, they kind of force you out there in Nicaragua to to be integrated to do everything. You know, because even even boxes is is is, is a is a royal pain. And when you don't have a box factory, you got to wait your turn when that guy decides to to do make your boxes. You know, you got to wait and then. Uh, to make molds, everything, everything. They even force you to grow sometimes because, you know, you, you buy a certain amount of tobacco and your cigar is hot, and then you can't buy no more of that uh, tobacco. Then you got to wait till they get it, and it's just a royal pain. And uh, So you're forced to do just about everything out there in Nicaragua. So you know, I, I, 
Yes. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I have a lot of uh, luckily. I have a lot of uh, connections. I got a lot of friends. Like I said, the guys over at Drew Estates. You know, they they help me tremendously whenever I'm in a jam that I need uh, this type of tobacco or that. You know, they they always take care of me and, and they they hook it up. But it's it, it's tough. It's tough. It's not easy. I, I was gonna make a point. Now I can't remember what it was, but um, no, it's 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 you guys are in such a great position. Um, with you know the blends that you guys have are, are they're popular people want them um, and now you're you're in control of making of your own product like you said you don't have to wait in line for somebody else now uh, it, it seems like you guys are really poised to take that next that proverbial next step in the industry yeah it, it's a lot a lot of hard work you know that was uh, our goal over here. You know, we had to make the factory right that the cigars would come, uh, you know, perfect. You know, we got that down packed, uh, and now we're moving to a bigger warehouse, like I mentioned before. And now I'm ready to, to hit the road. You know, we got a great team out here, and uh, it's nothing but, uh, you know, things are looking great, you know? Yeah, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. Um, well, I've got a whole list of questions here. <clears throat> I promised everybody that we would do our best to get through them all. Grab so a fire. I'm gonna get started. I mean, we we still got plenty of time, but I'm gonna get started here. So, um, so let's just go through some of these. Um, and this one's from uh, Doc Will, one of our uh, one of our site. He's on the site all the time. Uh, it says, "How long does it take to develop a blend from concept stage to marketplace? So, are you looking for specific taste profiles or or using specific tobaccos when you enter that blending process?" I I would tell Doc that the easiest part is making the cigar. Everything else around it is the hard part. Ma making the bands, uh, the boxes, uh, coming up with a name that's not taken. It's it's very hard. Now, when, when you blend, you know, you sit there and, uh, you know, I have different types of tobacco from all over the world. So I basically know what goes well with what. So you tell me the wrapper that you want. So let's say we want to come up with a uh, a Mexican, the, the San Andres. So I know what some of these tobaccos do with, you know, that work well with that with the Mexican. So we we create the blend. Uh, you know, we can go through five, six, seven, eight blends because I know what's going to work well. So a lot of them are going to taste well, uh, good. But here's the problem: you smoke it down there in Nicaragua, and then you bring it back to the states, and it tastes completely different. You you you're going to learn that, Logan, when you go to Nicaragua. Uh, don't ask me why. I've asked uh, people that have been in our industry for many, many years, and it's not just Nicaragua. That happens in Honduras and uh, and uh, Dominican. You, you create a blend. I I did it uh, about four months ago. I we, we we made a blend. I smoked it in the airport in Nicaragua, leaving Nicaragua, and then I had another one made. Same tobacco, same rollers, same everything. When I got into Miami, that I got into my car, I smoked it. And it tastes different. Uh, don't ask me why. If people say, "Well, it's the plane, it's the altitude," well, I bring in cigars sometimes by by ship. So, um, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's not the altitude. You know what I mean? But so you have to create a blend, and you try it over there. And if you like it, and then it might get better down here. Uh, sometimes it's not as good as it tastes in Nicaragua. Sometimes it tastes better. So when you create a blend, now you got to bring it into the states because here's where we're going to smoke it. We're going to smoke it in the states. We're going to sell it in the states, not in Nicaragua. So we bring it over here, and then we our our taste test really happens here, uh, believe mm. it or not. But everyone goes through that. That's interesting. It's, that's not the first time we've heard it, and I don't remember if it was you who brought it up before or not. But it's it just sounds like one of those like Bigfoot type stories, you know, where it's just. There's no real rhyme or reason behind it, but for whatever reason, it, it does taste different. That's, but it's not the first time we've heard it, so that's, that's just weird. To, to answer Doc's question, just it, it, you can make a blend, and the first one you make might be great, and you might like the first one, okay? And then you go from there. Okay, this one's a little too too strong for me. Can you tone it down a little bit? Then we'll take a little bit of the hero, we'll tone it down a little bit, or it's not strong enough, and then we'll add some stuff to make it a little stronger. You know, once you got your wrapper, the wrapper that you want, you know, you can make a blend in, in say, two, three hours. It's something that, that, that you really like. But it's everything else around that. It's where the pain is. Uh, getting the box, the, the, the bands, 
you know, the cliches to make the box. Uh, <laughs> it, everything else, is, it, it, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question. Go ahead. Even though I'm going down to Nicaragua. So I'm very interested in smoking fresh rolled cigars. Because, I mean, I understand the cigar kind of puberty process where they've got to rest for, you know, 90 days or 120 days, depending on, you know, different factors, what tobacco is used, so on and so forth. But I've never smoked a fresh rolled cigar. Can you tell everyone, especially for me, how a, a fresh rolled cigar is going to be compared to a cigar that's what there's puberty that's maybe four or five months old? Okay, that's a great question. I know. You can smoke I'm, I'm fresh rolled cigars from my factory. You can smoke all of them. Okay. Why? Because we, we don't we do everything Cuban style. We don't wet our wrapper. A lot of a lot of the factories, and I'm not knocking anyone, these are just traditions that other factories have, they wet their wrapper to stretch it out a little bit, okay? We train our guys that we don't wet our wrappers, okay? So if the wrapper's wet, okay, and, it, and it's just done, you know, you got you to gotta let it sit for, for some time for that wrapper to dry out. In my factory, you can smoke it right out. Now, if you let it sit for two, three months, uh, you know, it marinates a little better, okay? But it doesn't change very much, okay? Because the tobacco's already been aged. We don't use tobacco that's not been aged. So, would it taste the same? Well, it all depends what factory you get it from. If they wet that wrapper, it's, it's not even going to burn for you, and then you, you know, you, it's, it, the wrapper's wet. So, but you, can you smoke a, a fresh made cigar? Sure, absolutely. Okay. What's the I best cigar in the world? The one that you like. So exactly. <laughs> That's good. This is actually a this is actually a unplanned follow up question. This is also from Doc. And he says, "So, are your cigars at their peak taste right off the shelf, like right when the right when the shops get them in, uh, or is it you know better to let them sit for you know a little while after you pick them up?" It, it's it all depends what he likes. If he likes full body cigars. The longer you age the cigars, uh, everyone tells you cigars like wine. I, I don't really agree with that because. If you like full body cigars, well, my cigars, most of my cigars uh, are, are, are medium to full. Now, the, the, the tobacco is going to age a lot better, okay? It's going to marinate a lot better, what I mean, but it might lose a little bit of strength, okay? It might taste better to someone else who doesn't like, but if you really like full body cigars, then you can go ahead and smoke it right off the bat. But if what you like is a little milder to medium, and then you let them sit for a while, and, and, and it'll marinate a lot better, and it, it might taste a little milder. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, and we, we've talked about stuff like that in the past. Um, but, yeah, it, it does seem that, you know, with the, the stronger cigars, I mean, for me, and I know for Logan, Logan likes the, the, the really strong powerhouses. Uh, I, I, I occasionally get a wild hair and want to smoke one. I still haven't brought myself to smoke that warhead yet that you guys gave us at IPCPR. Although no, after no. after six months, it's probably calmed down enough for me to handle it, right? Well, have yourself a steak dinner and try it. Bro. Yeah, just I'll, I'll have to do that. What's I don't know the worst why. What's happen to you? You turn green, you know? Yeah, I, I've seen Logan do that, and that's ugly, man. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Color of my shirt, dude. <laughs> no, uh, we, have we got another one? Uh, guys, listen to uh, Cigar Chat on CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. We're here talking with Eric Espinosa of Espinosa Cigars. Thank you for tuning in. Logan, who is this next segment brought to you by? This segment is brought to you by none other than Espinosa Cigars and the did Cigar guys, Federation store. Did you even know that you were sponsoring this segment? I don't even own myself anymore, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys me is, is the check going to clear? The they just gonna clear, clear right? Yeah, you'll be this okay. This ain't cheap. This you'll, you'll ain't be cheap. Okay. You'll be okay. Right, go, go ahead, Logan. I'm sorry. Brought you're fine, dude. Brought to you by the Cigar Federation store, which they probably don't even know that they're actually sold in the Cigar Federation store. So I will tell them. We actually have quite the variety of Espinosa cigars in store at CigarFederation.com, and by variety I mean just the Habano, because we're <laughs> waiting to carry more cigars. So if you want to see more Espinosa cigars, shoot us an email. Let us know. Hop on Cigar Federation. You should check them out because they're great stuff. The Habano is my favorite. Check it out, store.cigarfederation.com. Back to you, Robert. Are we having a, a special on those right now? Eh, we might. We I don't know. Right. I haven't really said it. I mean, honestly, I've just 90, kind of 90% said, off? I mean, all yeah, must right. go. Fire <laughs> sale. Buy now. Uh, no, I, th I think we have a, a Cigar Chat Show special on those 10% off. So, um, But, yeah, Logan said we've got, the, we've got the Habano in stock, and hopefully we'll be uh, – 
diversifying a little bit in the in the near future. Uh, okay, so to jump back to this um, <clears throat> full strength, full body cigars, most of your cigars are in that range. Uh, this is a question from Fat Kid, still one Fat of my favorite, kid. still one of my favorite names. Uh, he says the majority of your cigars are full, uh, full strength, full body cigars. Is that because of your personal palate? I mean, you're blending them because that's what you like to smoke, or is it more uh, consumer driven? Here, Fat Kid, I'll answer your question. If <laughs> if, my, if my cigars were mild, I I wouldn't be talking to the Cigar Federation right now. You guys wouldn't be talking to me. Uh, nobody talks about a mild cigar. Very little people talk about mild cigars. It goes back to what I said earlier. The, the educated uh, smokers, they like medium to full body. Now, do we make a mild cigar here? Yeah, we have the La Zona, Connecticut. It's mild for the uh, mild smoker. It's got a lot of flavor. It's a, it's a mild cigar. But, yes, I I, I can't. Make everything that, that what I like to smoke. You know, I, we gotta have a variety over here. I like the the medium to full body cigars. But that's what people crave out there. Most people want medium to full body cigars. Uh, most of most of all the bloggers, you know, other than Robbie, you're about the only blogger that doesn't smoke. Uh, <laughs> no, I know, man. Cigars. He sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear a funny story? I'm not trying to derail it, but you know, I I love your boys over there at Moya Ruiz. I love. Uh, <laughs> uh, Danny and Nelson. Well, anyways, they gave me the the Habano. You know, they're like Logan, you're gonna love this. I know you knocked the Preto, you jerk, but you're gonna love this cigar. Well, I smoked it, man. I loved it. Made my top ten list this year. And Rob smoked one. Hell, he couldn't even make it halfway into it. He was hacking it, just it was, spitting up. He turned green, dude. It was it, awesome. It, it's not even that strong. I know. You that's know, what I said. You know, it's not. And I've revisited it since, and I like it. But for some reason, that day. And it was, I think it was the first cigar that I smoked that day. But for some reason, man, that thing was a heater when I smoked it that morning. It was just too much for me at the time. I don't know why. Eat something. Yeah, you know, I didn't have my, uh, no, yeah, that I was right. That was right after breakfast. Yeah. Home style, American cooking. He's just weak, dude. Yeah, don't I'm just, it. just, it's weak sauce. Weak sauce. <laughs> weak sauce. Um, so I've actually got, this is a, an interesting question from Kruk. Kruk or Kruk? I still haven't really... Figured out if which one it is. Victor Vitali's boyfriend. Yeah, Crack's really cool. I like him. But no, he's a cool guy. So here's his question. He says, "Are you guys quick to react to quote unquote industry industry trends, uh, or do you kind of are adhere pretty strictly to your company structured path?" No, listen. If something's hot, I, we don't we don't copy anyone out here. But you know. We, we like to be copied, not us copy some, someone, but, you know, the, the big cigars, they were selling, and we did an F-bomb with 7 by 70 and right now it's our, our big, you know, sometimes they're fads. I don't know if you remember maybe uh, two, uh, maybe a little longer, three, four years ago, Lanceros were hot, but they were hot for like five, six months. And, yep. and now the, the bigger ring gay cigars, they're, they're uh, you know, they've been around for, for now like like a year, year and a half, and uh, I don't know if it's, a, if it's a fat or not, but a, a lot of, I mean, I don't like smoking them, but people are. And um, are we quick? Yes, we're not corporate America over here, you know. If, if there's a certain size that, that that's doing well, and uh, you, why not? You know what I'm saying? Um, hell, uh, you know, we, we, were the, we were the second company to come out with barcodes when, uh, when uh, I had the business partner when we were United Tobacco. I think uh, Gusano was the first one. We came out with the barcodes. Everybody has barcodes. Uh, you know, um, there's things that, that we do. We had the, the hottest T-shirts out there. No one had t -shirt. We came out with T-shirts. The whole world's got T-shirts now. So, I mean, listen, whatever works. Uh, you know, again, it's a lot harder for corporate America to do those things. We have our own factory, you know. Whatever, whatever sells, you, you know, listen, we'll... We'll follow that trend also. We don't have an issue with that here. So, question on on that on that type of thing. When you say like the seven by seventy, when the the f bomb, when you guys came out with that, from from the thought of okay, we want to do something like this to having something like that hit the stores. Given that you have your own factory, you guys can really pull those triggers whenever you want. How long does a process like that take to go from and to keep that blend kind of consistent? Well. It, it, like I told you guys earlier, it's um, it, it depends if we're gonna do one size. Uh, you know, if it's uh, if we're doing a, a different vitola uh, of a blend that we already have, let's say, let's, for example, let's say we want to do a, 
a seven by seventy in uh, in the Espinosa. Well, you know, we already have we already have the the band. We we know you know what, what bands we're going to use. We use the same bands. We're going to use the same boxes. Okay, it's just a, a process. Of, now, do we have the molds or don't we have the molds? So we already have the molds because we do the seven by seventy in La Bomba. So yes, we have the molds. So every the whole process it's a lot easier. Now we're going to come out with. A, a, a different uh, name or everything's going to be a, a different, you know, we're going to call it whatever, Joe Blow, now we got to go make the bands, uh, we got to go, what color boxes are we going, we got to get the artwork, we got to get the cliches, what are we going to call it, if it's a Rabusha Toro, Church or, or Torpedo, or whatever, we have the cliches for that, but if we're going to call it whatever, Chihuahua, now we gotta go make a <laughs> we we gotta go make a cliche that that you know that's called Chihuahua. So that pre process takes a lot longer, and we're just adding a size to to an existing uh, brand. Then that's a lot that's a lot faster. Okay, so it's with the way that you guys are set up to react to <clears throat> different sizes and come with a line extension. I mean that's the kind of thing that you guys can it's you guys can do that pretty quickly. So it's yeah I mean there's and this this next question actually kind of filters into that, but that the uh, the customer demand, and I know we've talked about the big ring gauges. I feel like ever since the show started, and so I don't think we can call it a fad anymore. I think they're here to stay. I still don't smoke them, but uh, I mean, obviously somebody's smoking them. But uh, you know, for you guys to have the power to do that <clears throat> and to react to those things uh, quickly, um, it just you guys are in such a unique position, man. It's called being uh, nimble. It is. Yeah. 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 It's great. It, it really is. It's a, it's it's a great feeling. You're you're absolutely right. We didn't have the power to do stuff like that before, and and, and now we do. Um, you know, back in the days, they whoa, well, you know, I don't have that mold. I would have to buy that mold. And if you don't buy X amount of cigars, I'm not going to buy that mold. So I just go right off the bat. Hey, listen, let's get these molds done. You know, we the molds we either make them in in Tampa or in Nicaragua, depending. Uh, you know, what's what's quicker and. And uh, we go ahead and we do it, you know. And I get outvoted here, you know. My son is a uh, is a uh, 22. Anthony's how old are you now? Anthony 28. 28. Anthony's 28. I'm 46. I, I, you know, all three of us have a vote, and I get outvoted all the time. So you know, the you gotta that... tell those youngsters what's up, man. I yeah, know. Yeah, and I get I get outvoted here all the time. Anthony Anthony looks like he's about 17. He does. He's, but he has a heart of a lion. <laughs> <laughs> so this this actually this is right up Anthony's alley because I mean he's involved with a lot of this stuff. How has social media Im impacted your sales? Has it been because you guys are really really active with the T-shirt Tuesdays and stuff, and uh, you know being on shows like you know spending time with us, and you guys are always active and accessible. Um, in the last few years, that's really been the trend for you guys. How has that impacted your sales overall? Uh, it's it's incredible. It really is. Uh, you know, I, I've been I, I've been in this business when computers probably didn't exist when I started. So yeah, no, you, you guys are great. Uh, all the bloggers, uh, you know, the, all the information that you can get from from bloggers, the internet, it, it, the social media. I think it's wonderful. Twitter, Facebook, uh, you know, all, all the bloggers. Like I said, uh, your cigar federation. You guys do a great job out there. It just impacts you. Get the word out there because some, you know, not all the stores uh, carry our product. Not all the stores carry everybody's product. But we get it out there. People get to know us, know what we're about. You know, even the the cigar aficionados, the the cigar snobs. You know, they help tremendously. The magazines help, but social media, it's where it's at, and and that's why we tend to make a lot of medium to full body cigars because that's what most of all the bloggers that that's what they like. You know, when's the last time you, and no disrespect to anyone, you guys said, oh, I smoked the great Macanudo. You know, people don't talk about that. People talk about that. <laughs> Macanudo. You know, you know, yeah. had a Macanudo. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you picked up Macanudo because there's you know, an inside joke about that, but we'll we'll tell it off talk camera. About, people talk about medium full body cigars, and that's, that's what true. you guys do out there, you know, and, 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 and I'm very grateful for a lot of stuff a lot of bloggers do. I got uh, a question, Rob. Yeah, Logan, go ahead. Question, has anyone ever told you that you look like Ernesto Padilla? Dude, have you, uh, I, I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> yeah, they have. A lot of people have. Yeah. Okay, because everyone in the chat keeps saying it because we had Ernesto on uh, a couple weeks ago. And did he, needless did to he say, um, let's did just he what? say that he didn't take his Adderall that day. 
Oh, you didn't? Oh, it was nah. the ADD interview from oh, Howard. Yeah. He was. Oh, God. I mean, I talk a lot, and I'm off par, but I mean, he, he made me blush. I, I, and I got that's funny, rough. I got a funny story about him. It, it'll take, uh, I, I'll try to uh, say it fast. I'm in Cuba. I have, you know, I was born in Cuba. I have a lot of family members in Cuba. And I went a couple years ago, and um, and I went to the Partagas factory. And, um, and the guy... I, you know, I buy three cigars out there, and of course, none of them drew. None of them, you know, they were they were horrible. So, I was with a friend of mine, and uh, he he had his cigar cut. I, I don't cut my cigars; I bite my cigars. And the guy working the counter, you know, had a torch uh, lighter and kept lighting it, lighting it, lighting it, and gave it a lot of fire. And I asked the guy, "Why do you do that?" He goes, "Cause that's how you light a cigar." Okay, I, I don't say anything. Now, remember, I'm in a communist country over there, so I um. The guy goes to me, let me light yours. I said, no, I'll light my own. So I lit it up. I put, gave a little flame to it, and uh, and of course it didn't draw. And the guy goes, that's not how you light a cigar. And then I said, why not? And then he starts asking me questions, and I'm answering all, and I'm answering all the questions. So, um, and he asked me, how do you know so much about cigars? I said, well, I read a lot. You know, I don't want to tell him I got my own cigar company because I don't know. Again, we're in a communist country. They might think that I'm there to steal their secrets and all this. So, <laughs> um. Now the guy, all he starts knocking is all the, the, the cigars made, uh, you know, other than in Cuba. Well, and he mentioned cigar aficionados should be, uh, the, all the top 25 should be Cuban cigars and this and that and all this. And now I'm getting a little pissed off. And and I go, dude, doesn't don't you got to give it so much flame because it's unfermented tobacco. You know, the, the, the cigar, you guys don't cure anything. That's why, you know, it, it doesn't burn. And the guy, that's not true and this and that. And they kept asking me, how do you know so much about cigars? So as he's telling me this, comes in a guy, a guy comes in, I've seen this guy in Nicaragua, a Nicaraguan guy, and he looks at me, he goes, I know you, he goes, you know me, he goes, he goes, yeah, you, you have a factory in Nicaragua, I said, I don't know what you're talking about, bro, he goes, that's not you, I said, no, that's not me, but there's someone in the industry that they say looks like me, uh, I go, Padilla or Padaya, or, you know, I didn't want to say Padilla. <laughs> I act like I didn't know the guy. So I told my buddy, let's get the hell out of here. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, they lock us up in Cuba. <laughs> they lock us up. But I knew the guy from Nicaragua, and I said, let me get the hell out of here, man. So I blamed Ernie on that. This is a mistaken identity in a communist country. Uh, well, that, does, that sounds like a recipe for disaster, man. Right? That's, but that's my Padilla story, yeah. That's Ernie's funny. Like, yeah, but we do. I, uh, I think I'm better looking than him, but yeah. We, we, I would he, agree. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not going to comment on all that, but I mean, you guys do have uh, have a similar a similar uh, similar appearance. I get um, Roberto Duran a lot. I could well. I would see that a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, you, you you've got an edge too. You've got more of an edge than uh, than Ernesto does. Um, uh, sorry, guys, you're you're listening to uh, Cigar Chat live on CigarFederation.com. My light is way too bright. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and broadcasting around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Uh, we're sitting here with uh, Eric Espinosa, I almost said Ernesto Padilla. Uh, <laughs> talk, we're talking about cigars and, and uh, mistaken identities in communist countries and all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, Logan, who's this segment brought to you by? And I'm going to fix my light. This segment is brought to you by the newest show on Cigar Federation called What Embargo. We have a lot of, cigar, we have a lot of shows like Stogie Geeks and Half Ash and this show on Cigar Federation, but guess what? There's one thing that we don't have a show of. It's Cubans. So what are we going to do? We're going to put two white guys on the show that have never lived in Cuba and know nothing about it, and they're going to start a show about Cubans. So when we went out and found the two most educated Americans on Cubans, the first show is going to be this Saturday starting at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time on Cigar Federation. Their names are going to be left unknown, but just realize their names from now on will be known as Big Tuna and Catfish. Back to you, Rob. You said 9.30. Is that a.m. or p.m.? Yeah, that's definitely in the evening where you don't get up early on Cigar Federation. All right. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, so I had to go and fix my light. So, okay, Eric, I didn't uh, ask you this before we got on, but you guys have been posting pictures and stuff. So can we talk about the Bunker Buster a little bit? Yeah, you, you know, we're making it uh, for uh, Smoke In, Smoke In, uh, your listeners don't know who they are. They, it's a friend of ours, a friend of the uh, company, uh, Abe. Uh, he, he's got about uh, 11 stores out here in uh, in, in Florida, and um, he does a micro blend. There's different companies that make his micro blends, and uh, he approached us. Uh, he has his big, uh, uh, it's like the big smoke. He calls it the gray smoke out here. 
in uh, in West Palm. It's in February, and uh, we're making this micro blend for for the show for his for his shops, uh, and it's called Bunker Buster. So we sat down with Abe, Anthony, my son, you know, and, and this is what we came up with. The blend it's a, it's incredible blend. It's a uh, it's a medium to full body. That's what we're known to. It, uh, the size, it's it's a unique size. It's a box press, uh, sort of like a, a preferito, but it's not a preferito. It's, it's a unique size, and it's called Bunker Buster. And uh, we're releasing it uh, in uh, in February twentieth, uh, I believe it is. Uh, is it the twenty twenty second? I don't have the date on me right now. And uh, and um, as a matter of fact, I have one right now. If uh, you want to see it, this is this. I don't know how close you guys. I'll, I'll try to get it close for you. But, there you go. Uh, there it is. It looks yeah. like a patch on a shoulder, like a sergeant's patch on the shoulder. That's that's exactly what it is. Is that you, Anthony? You're so genius. That's Anthony. Yeah, but that's it's cool. a, a great blend. It's a phenomenal cigar, and uh, we're real excited about it. You know that he chose us to to make his a uh, micro blend. So how, when you say micro blend, I mean, how is this going to be real limited, or is it going to be something they're going to carry for a while? Yeah, well, it, it's limited. It's 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 a limited brand because every time he comes up with, with a new one, and then you know when we sell those, uh, you know he he's done one with uh, Fuentes, he did one with uh, uh, my father. I think I think he's got about he did one with uh, Matt Booth. I think he's got the Baked three or delicious. four other ones. He has uh, the Tatuaje, right? The Apocalypse. Uh, yes, yeah, he got Apocalypse. Yeah, and yep. yeah, he's got like yeah four or five of them, and uh, and um, hey, listen, it's. Uh, it, so as limited as he wants it to be. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That's well, that's a good compliment. I mean, to be. I mean, when, you, when you're naming off those companies that you're naming off, that's a good company to be in. So, uh, so congratulations to you guys on that. Um, yeah. Now, the, the, one of the questions here from uh, is from Jose, three hundred two Jose. Uh, he was asking about the bunker buster. He says, "How does that? How does it compare in strength to the Warhead?" It's 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 not as full body as the Warhead. It, it's uh, this one tends to be a little bit more to the medium full. Uh, the warhead is uh, full full. I've had people that smoke the warhead and tell me, oh, it's not that strong. Well, it all depends. Everybody's palate is different. Sure. But, but this one, it's it's uh, it, it's more it tends to be more medium medium to full, and the warhead is just uh, overpowering. I mean, it's a, <laughs> a real, real full full body. Okay, so it's it's going to be a little more. Uh... A little, a little, more, a little we, more Rob we, style. We yeah. toned it down. Yeah, yeah you slowed it. You slowed it down for me a little bit. I appreciate that. Yeah, we we, we toned it down a little bit. Yeah, that's that's good. I'm getting old, man. I can't I can't go so fast anymore. So I appreciate you guys slowing it down. I'm a lot older than I look. <laughs> At least I like to think that. You don't uh, have any grades yet, my friend. So you you can't be that old. No, I, I'm not taking the hat off. Take the hat off, dude. No negative. That's bad times. Nobody needs to see that. Uh, Logan, I'm just still ripping through these questions rapid fire. Do you have any that you wanted? Uh, <coughs> um, no. No, you're good. Well, no. I mean, you you keep asking your questions. I mean, I've, okay. You know, I've, chime in. Chime in when you feel necessary. Oh, um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What is 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 this blend going to be the last of the releases related in concept to La Bamba and the Warhead? Or okay, so he's he's talking about okay. So is the Bunker Buster? It's kind of a line extension of the La Bamba um, and the Warhead. It's on those along those same lines. Is that Military. something? Is that something? Is that line? Is that something that you guys are going to keep extending? You know, moving forward. No, we 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 got some things in the work. This is just an, an exclusive for Smokin. Okay. It's actually his brand we're making for him. It's it's not a line extension or anything. It's it's his brand, and uh, we got some on the works for. Uh, that we're releasing at the at the show, the IPCPR, however you say that. I still see I, I still say RTDA. I can't get that one down. But, I say uh, insane clown posse. Yeah, the warhead did, the warhead did so well that you know Anthony's working on something now, and uh, you know, and uh, we'll release it in the, at, at the show. Okay, so there's something to look forward to. That's good, and I, I can see your uh, your your warhead uh, statue in the background there. Uh, that was quite the controversy when that thing disappeared during IPCPR. I remember that. Remember that huh? I remember why. I, I Anthony was, there. was stressed out, man. Did you I know who took it? Cigar obsession. I, just kidding. I, I didn't. Go I ahead. never did hear the story, but he. The, it was just coming back. I can I tell you if you want to hear it. Uh, want, I would love to hear it. Yeah, if you want to share the story, spread that know. rumor, dude. Go. So we get we get to the show early and um and it's not there. Now I know there's 
I had no wait. For, let me time. let me interrupt you real quick for yeah. reference because I've seen this thing in person. I know how big it is. Let everybody know kind of how big this thing is. I mean, it's like three or four feet long, right? Yeah, it's an actual warhead. Okay. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's not active. But, yeah, disarmed. Uh, sure. This is our. Yeah. I was waiting to see how this interview went. Then maybe we could have <laughs> <laughs> no. So we get to the show and um. And actually, it's signed by a lot of the uh, military. And anyone at the show that was in the military, we you know we let them sign it. And uh, oh, cool. it was a great thing. A lot of people took pictures with it. And, uh, it was the hit of the show. Was, everyone was you know wanted to take pictures of it and all that. So we get to the we get to the convention and uh, and the war has gone. So there was two guys whom I thought could have possibly take it as a joke. I asked the one guy and he said, "No, it really wasn't me." Um, uh, and I'll tell you who it is. I asked George Rico because George Rico took one of our our ashtrays one day, and uh, in Vegas, and uh, he took it around taking pictures, and he took it to the casino, took it here, took it there. And George is a friend of a, a, of the company, which you know was great, and he put it back, you know, no big deal. So, and the other guy wasn't at, at his booth, so I said, listen, he's not there, and it was early, and I know this other guy, and I'll tell you later who he was. Uh, I go, this guy ain't waking up early, so. We called the security. Security came by and then they got like four or five guys on it. What did it look like? We showed them a picture, yada, yada, yada. So and then I walked to this guy's booth, which was uh, Nemesh, this Rocky's cousin. I don't know if you guys know who Nemesh is. Oh, yeah. He, he, he's got the cigar now. He's got the cigar, Nimmy D, Thunder. I don't know if you yeah. guys know who he is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're aware. So, okay. So, anyway, <laughs> um, I go to his booth and I ask him, listen, do you know? Who took this warhead? He says, he says no. And I asked him, do you know where it's at? He says, uh, he says maybe. I said, listen, I got security all around everywhere looking for it. And he says to me, oh, well, um, I go, I don't know where it's at. I said, are you sure? He goes, I'll tell you what. You got five minutes. Take it back. If not, I'm telling you, they're going to come get you. He goes, ah, well, within five minutes, the uh, the warhead's back where it was supposed to be. And uh Security comes by and says, "What was it?" I said, hey, "Listen, it was it was a joke." He goes, "No, I, I want to know who it is." And I tell the guy, "Listen, I'm I can't tell you who it is." He goes, "Well, you need to tell me. Somebody's gonna, you know, we we got extra guys looking around and we pay for this." I said, "Listen, guy, I, I'm not a rat. The guy's a friend of mine, and I just can't tell you who it is." And I said, "Let me give you some cigars. Let me take care of it. Let me. What do you want? You know, I gave him a bunch of cigars, and now the guy opened up a little bit." And I said, listen, now I'm going to tell you who it is, but I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go over there and, and bust his tail. He goes, <laughs> what do you mean? I said, yeah, I need you to scare him. Can you do that for me? He goes, sure. I said, so go over there, act like you're going to arrest him or whatever, and just and just uh, go over there. Can you do that for me? But I don't want this guy to get in trouble. He goes, no, no, no. So anyway, the security guys go up there, walk over there, and they tell him, hey, listen, were you the guy who took it? And he's right off the bat, and I'm watching from going, no, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. <laughs> they told me it was you and the guy, and you got these three guy, big guys there telling him, no, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. He goes, they told me it was you. If you tell me that it was you, and then we'll leave you alone. If, if you keep denying it, he goes, no, yeah, it was me, but it was a joke, it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that, that's that's what happened with the war. Yeah, that's, I remember seeing Anthony that morning, man. He was freaking out. Yeah, a stressed. The, war, the warhead is gone, man. We don't know where it is, and all this and that. That's the I Ruskies got it, man. The Ruskies. And it, I mean, for a joke, I mean, that's that, you know, it's a good joke, it's a good prank, but it's got to take like two or three guys to move that thing, right? No, I mean, no, it's not that heavy. It's, oh, okay. Uh, it's empty, so uh, you know, it, it's not that heavy. It looks, I mean, look, it looks heavy, but anyway, it looks formidable. Uh, yes. <laughs> Formidable is it doesn't weigh one. any more than a Chihuahua does, <laughs> or a Labradoodle. They're so fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you guys are listening. Joke. To, you guys are listening to Cigar Chat on uh, CigarFederation.com, broadcast around the world on the Armed Forces Radio Network. Thanks for tuning in. We're here with Eric Espinosa talking about all kinds of crazy stuff, uh, Labradoodles and and missing warheads, and and I didn't know that was a real warhead. I mean, obviously not active, of course, but. I didn't. I didn't realize it was real. I just thought it was a replica. Um, anyway, uh, so, Logan, who's this next uh, segment brought brought to uh, the listeners by? This next segment is brought to you by <laughs> the sound of silence. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> I like them. Yeah, they're good. 
You know, Back you, to you, Rob. You know, you have those moments where uh, in life when you, you say something and you, you, you put power into someone's hands and then all of a sudden you're thinking, man, I shouldn't have done that. And even yeah, before you did... one of those moments. It was one of those moments, man. I knew it. But, you know, just this is the last segment of the show. We've only got a few minutes left. Um, but check out, check out our... Uh, Check out the Cigar of the Month Club on store at cigarfederation.com. It's the best one in the universe, guaranteed. Uh, Robert, and if you, not, if not, Logan will pay you back. Go ahead. You know, before the show started, you told me I, I got to keep it clean, correct? Yeah. Have you read what it says underneath um, <laughs> Logan's name? <laughs> I have, but as long as it, as long as he doesn't say it, it's all right. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a it's a podcast. For that, now, it's live, right? But that that was how the whole conversation. That you walked in on at the beginning came about. Okay. Yeah. And why we've been talking about dogs. And I didn't know if it was a statement that he was making, or if it was like Comments a confession. Save lives. <laughs> <laughs> if you want, if you want to see what it says under Logan's name, here it is. But you got to come to cigarfederation.com to check it out. If you're listening to the podcast, or you're listening on okay. AFRN. So there you go. I don't know if if he's admitting to something, uh, or if it's like you know, I don't know what it is. But anyway. Um, so we've got, we've got what, like five minutes left, Logan? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So we got to do these giveaways, so let's, what do we have to, what do we have to give away? You've got them right there in hold your on, hands. Hold on, hold on, just Sonny. You've got them right there, let's go. I've got a sampler of the Habano, looks like a, I would call that a Corona Gorda, and then it looks like a five pack of the Maduro, looks like a Corona Gorda. There is one shirt, Espinosa shirt. From the streets, made in La Zona, Hetchin La Zona, in a large, which I feel sorry for that person, and my personal favorite, Double X, baby. <laughs> and we'll be giving, do we want to do, well, I'm going to ship these out so I know Rob doesn't care, but should we do two winners with a five pack and a shirt, or should we do whatever? Four? You want to do four? Yeah, All whatever. Right, we'll, you're in charge, man. I'll okay, pass well, the let's reins just do over. four. We'll just do okay. four. And then we'll just say the first four people to email me at logan at cigarfederation.com with their name and their address and give me a compliment. Wow. That's yeah. a tough that's a tough road to hoe right there. This might be the first time you guys don't have any winners. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true, Eric. Thank you very much, sir. Dude, Eric's <laughs> awesome, dude. I love this guy. Uh, so yeah, if if and you gotta make sure that whoever wins a large t shirt can fit into it. Mm-hmm. No offense, we'll, guys, but we'll get it if if they're if they're extra large, double extra. They just let us know. We'll ship it to them. We'll though. just we'll, we'll just stretch it out. Just make it work. No worries. We'll we'll take care of it. We'll make we'll it. We'll just right. make it work. Um, we'll make it right. So uh, you know, I think we actually you know I got one more question. Uh, so I know you just released a Bunker Buster. Um, well, we, we've we've touched on shooter. We touched on your question a little bit. He's asking about new blends. You guys have some stuff coming up for IPCPR, but. Um, uh, we'll we'll probably hear more about that later. So um, we've actually I, I fulfilled my promise. I answered all the uh, we got all the audience questions addressed. Uh, Eric, thanks for taking the time and sitting down with us. Before we wrap up, let everybody know where they can find you. You guys are active all over the internet and on Twitter, Facebook, and all that. So let everybody know all the pertinent information to get in touch with you guys. Yeah, well, you know they they can uh, if they want to go on our website is uh, Espinosa Cigars com, and um, you know. We're real active. That's uh, Anthony's uh, uh, gig. He's the one that handles out that. But you, you can reach us at uh, at Espinosa Cigars. So ev- everywhere, uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that. It's it's pretty much at Espinosa Instagram yes. and all that too. So all over the interwebs, dude. All, all over the interwebs, and and every time that you do that, you're you're getting in touch with Anthony, and Anthony's a really nice guy. So be nice to him. He's okay. Uh, he's okay. <laughs> yeah. He's he's good when he agrees with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I don't have a vote here. I mean, it's him and my son. They become best friends. He made my my son's the godfather of uh, of his newborn, and so I'm I'm out. You know, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. You, know? you ever seen the movie? You ever seen the movie Meet Joe Black? I, With Brad Pitt. I, Brad Pitt and Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. I have. They're, they're trying to get rid of the the old man. That's that's what they're trying to do to me here. <laughs> yeah. just, you're just edging you out, just slowly yeah. but surely. Well, sure, yeah. Eric, it's been a lot of fun, man. Thank you for uh, for hanging out with us, and uh, you're always so gracious <laughs> to to take your time and and chat with us. So we appreciate it. Uh, time, guys. Yeah, when you know, we're gonna see, we'll see you around this year. We'll see you at IPCPR. Best of luck this year. 
um, you guys are you're, you're really pulling in the right direction. So um, thanks, thanks for all your support. Thanks for everything you guys do. Not just for my company, for everything you guys do for the uh, the whole cigar industry. Uh, look, I mean, it's, it's, well, thank you. We appreciate that, Logan. What are you chuckling about? Some of these responses are just <laughs> hilarious. Like, <laughs> I can't read them on the air. I think what we're gonna have to do, what we're gonna have to do, is put, we'll make a thread and you'll post them all up on the website so people can read. Well, maybe not all of them, but fat but most kid, of I'm already gonna call that you're witted already because you're just the. Somebody really told you something nice. <laughs> no. I mean, it, it was like a gloved backhand, but it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So thanks for checking out uh, another Cigar Chat. We appreciate all the support. <coughs> you can find us on Logan Mute Button. Uh, you can find us on CigarFederation.com. Uh, I'm at Robbie Raz on Twitter. Logan is at Logan at Dell on Twitter. Corporate Monkey. Corporate Monkey. Um, we are going to be back with you guys next week with... Um, I want to say, dude. I want to say it's a nomad. Uh, I think you're right. I think it's uh, Fred, Fred from. Yeah, you're right. Fred from Nomad Cigars is going to be on next week, so we'll catch up with him and see what he's got uh, cooking with uh, some of his new Nicaraguan blends. Uh, guys, again, we appreciate all the support. Uh, everybody out there on AFRN, thank you for everything you do for us around the world. Um, and uh, that's it. Have a great weekend, Eric. Thanks a lot, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for the lot for having me, guys. All right, all right guys. Have a good week. Good weekend. Yeah.